Hello, my name is Nima Basiri. Um, I'm an ACLS new faculty fellow here at Duke. Um, I teach in a couple of departments, including the Duke Institute of Brain Sciences, as well as the program in literature and the department of philosophy. Um, in the spring, I'll be teaching a course in neuroscience that's called Brain, Self, and Society. And it's a course on the history of brain research, and I just wanted to talk to you a little bit about what I think is um, exciting about the course and what some of the course objectives are. Um, now, the goal of this course is not just to see how the brain was imagined differently in the past. And the reason for this is that thinking about the brain and nerves, for example, in the middle of the 18th century, also yielded a totally different picture of what it meant to be a person and a self different than, for example, just a hundred years later in the middle of the 19th century or in the middle of the 20th. What we begin to see is not just how differently people were imagining the brain and nerves historically, but consequently how differently they were imagining themselves. So the real objective of the course then is not just to get a better handle on the nature of history, but rather to see what history can offer which is that the ideas of brain and self were developing together. So by looking at the history of brain research up even to some present day neuroscience being done at Duke, we'll start to see that research on the brain isn't always a matter of discovering the truth of the human, but sometimes it means constructing an idea of it. So hopefully you'll walk away from this course, not just with a better idea of the history of brain research, but also with a better sense of what's at stake in the future of neuroscience as well.